If there seems to be an air of anxious anticipation about this group, it is certainly well justified. They are awaiting the arrival of the President of the United States. They have invested weeks of meticulous planning and arduous effort into preparations for this event, and the Chief Executive's arrival is nearly at hand. The purpose of President Kennedy's visit to the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory was a briefing on the details of Project Rover, the laboratory's program to develop nuclear rocket engines for space travel. This is part of a tour of Western defense installations that included the SAC headquarters at Omaha, Nebraska, the Sandia Corporation in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the nuclear reactor development station at Jackass Flats, Nevada, where the nuclear rocket propulsion reactors developed by the laboratory are tested. Since the President's interest centered primarily on Project Rover, an elaborate exhibit was constructed in Wing 9 of the CMR building to aid the laboratory officials in briefing the President. A helipad was constructed immediately adjacent to Wing 9 to accommodate the six military helicopters that were utilized to transport the President, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, and some 30 others of the official party from the Santa Fe airport to Los Alamos. Nearly a hundred newsmen and photographers were on hand to cover the President's arrival, plus official laboratory photographers with a profusion of cameras. Vice President Johnson's helicopter, which immediately preceded the President's, landed amid swirling clouds of dust. Dr. Norris E. Bradbury, laboratory director, Dr. Raymer Schreiber, associate director, Mr. Charles C. Campbell, AEC manager of the Los Alamos area office, and other officials met the visitors as they arrived. After being welcomed, the vice president was escorted to the Wing 9 exhibit area. And now at 2.39 p.m., December 7, 1962, the big moment is at hand. The president's helicopter makes a low, cautious approach to the pad, lands, taxis into position. And the Secret Service men rush around the craft to take up their positions. President John F. Kennedy, the first president of the United States to visit the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, has arrived. The president is accompanied down the ramp from the helicopter by Clinton P. Anderson, senior senator from New Mexico and the president's official host while he is in the state. Dr. Bradbury welcomes the group to Los Alamos and then escorts them to Wing 9 for the rover briefing. Members of the official party are issued special badges for access to the classified exhibit. Inside Wing 9, the President is joined by the members of the official party who preceded him. Among those meeting the President is Mr. Edwin W. Pauley, Regent of the University of California. Before entering the classified portion of the Rover exhibit, Dr. Bradbury outlined for the President the major areas of research engaged in by the laboratory. With this group is Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, Chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Wing 9 was divided into two exhibit areas, one unclassified and the other classified. The area shown is the unclassified portion and was later open to the press. It is separated from the classified area by 10-foot high curtains. Included in the various displays for the President to view was a full-size cutaway Kiwi B4 reactor. This was so oriented that the cutaway portion, revealing the reactor core, faced the classified area, and the other half was open to the press so that they might have a close-up view of what is destined to become the first nuclear rocket engine. Models of the rift and Nerva configurations were shown, as well as various types of fuel elements used in the Kiwi reactors. Dr. Amer Schreiber, Technical Associate Director of the laboratory, conducted the classified briefing. The President spent approximately an hour in the rover briefing and meeting the staff of the laboratory. The press photographers were admitted inside Wing 9 shortly before the President left the classified area. Here, President Kennedy and Dr. Bradbury leave the classified area to pose for the photographers. In back of the President is the Kiwi B-4 reactor. 
Dr. Bradbury presented the president with a leather-bound album of color photographs, illustrating Project Rover and other laboratory activities, as well as scenes of the Los Alamos community. Vice President Johnson, Chairman Seaborg, Senator Anderson, and Congressman Montoya joined the president in front of the Kiwi mock-up. President Kennedy was described as being deeply impressed by what he saw and heard during the rover briefing. The president and his party posed for the photographers for about three minutes in front of the reactor. The official party then left Wing 9 to travel by motorcade to the high school football field where the president was to address the citizens of Los Alamos. Approximately 6,000 people jammed the football field to welcome the president. The high school band played Hail to the Chief as the presidential motorcade arrived at the stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, Los Alamos this afternoon is enormously honored. On this platform are the great citizens of our country. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the President of the United States. Dr. Bradbury, Mr. Vice President, Senator Anderson, Congressman Montoya, Congressman Morris, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> Senator Anderson just said, well, they don't, I don't know how well they dress here, but they got brains. But I think that you uh, look very well, and I want to tell you that uh, we're delighted to have you have a chance to come and express our Greetings to you. The president went on to point out the burden this country has carried over the past 17 years in the defense of freedom all over the world. In enumerating the reasons why the people of the United States have been able to meet the responsibility of maintaining the freedom of millions of people, Mr. Kennedy had this to say about Los Alamos. And lastly, I think this country has performed its great function because, as Senator Anderson had said, its people have had brains. And we have appreciated the cult of excellence. And we have developed that talent in a way which has served our country and served mankind. And there are no group of people in this country whose record over the last 20 years has been more preeminent in the service of their country than all of you here in this small community in New Mexico. We want to express our thanks to you. It's not merely what was done during the days of the Second War, but what has been done since then, not only in developing weapons of destruction, which by an irony of fate helped maintain the peace and freedom, but also in medicine and in space and all the other related fields, which can mean so much to mankind if we can maintain the peace and protect our freedom. The president concluded his speech by thanking the people of Los Alamos again for their contribution to the freedom of this country and that of the people of the free world. And he complimented the community on the excellence of its schools and its children, and hoped from these boys and girls the same kind of service as has been rendered by the people of Los Alamos. When President Kennedy left the speaker's stand, he walked over to the cheering crowds and shook hands with the children for over a minute. This would indeed be a moment that many a boy and girl would remember for long years to come.
president and his party then left the football field to drive to the airport where the helicopters were waiting. On the way, the motorcade passed through streets lined with people young and old cheering the president. The motorcade arrived at the airport and leave taking was quickly accomplished. After 100 memorable minutes in Los Alamos, the president departed for Albuquerque. And so the tumult and the shouting dies, the captains and the kings depart, and left behind is a feeling of pride and accomplishment that Los Alamos will long remember.